mit jelent a narcizmus a társadalmakban. Nézzük meg most, mit jelent a személyekre szabottan, a kisebb társadalmi egységekben, mit jelent családi szinten, ha a családban van egy narcisztikus személy, egy rossz szindulatú narcisztikus személy, mit jelent ez a többi családtak számára. So now that we see what does it mean globally, let's narrow it down a little bit. What does it mean, for instance, in a family, the roles in between a family roles, if there is a narcissistic person exists in a family? I think in interpersonal relationships, family is one type of interpersonal relationship. Uh, there are essentially two, two problems. One is the zero-sum game and the other is the contagion effect. So zero-sum game simply means that the narcissist doesn't engage in intimacy or in building something, building a family. Or the narcissist engages from the first second, from the first date. Narcissist engages in a power play. It's all about power. Who has the power? Who is right? Who is wrong? Uh, who will dictate? Who will lead? Who will follow? Who will? So it's all about power. It's a constant contest and competition for power. And of course, you can't build anything long-term or healthy on such a foundation. Because you need, of course, a power matrix in a relationship, but you also need collaboration. You need intimacy. You need common values. You need, you need many other things. Power is not enough. But for a narcissist, everything else, if it does exist, and it rarely exists, but if it does exist, everything else is at the service of accumulating and exercising power. So, for example, a narcissist could encourage intimacy, but he would encourage intimacy to have power over his partner. So, he would use the intimacy to blackmail his partner, to give him services or concessions. Or he could, for example, encourage collaboration, but he would encourage a collaboration so that he reaps the fruit of the collaboration, so that he benefits, so that he profits, not equally. So whatever happens, the narcissist will leverage whatever happens and whatever attributes of the relationship for his own gain and for control. So it's a power play. That's the first insurmountable problem in the relationship. The second problem is contagion. The longer you live with the narcissist, the longer you collaborate with the narcissist, the longer you love the narcissist, the more narcissistic you become. Extremely simple. It's an infectious disease. It's a pathogen. It's not possible to spend time with the narcissist and psychopath, narcissistic, more psychopathic. You find yourself doing the most amazing things that you would have never believed you could do. I don't know, lie, cheat. You, and you don't recognize yourself anymore. You have lost your identity. You don't know who you are anymore. It's extremely disorienting, extremely. It's like you have acquired the narcissist identity somehow. It's body snatching. It's like a body snatching process. And you feel, you feel that while before you have met the narcissist, you had very clear, strict boundaries. When you, when you have lived with the narcissist for a while, you begin to dissolve. You begin to, your boundaries begin to be very fuzzy and you begin to dissolve like diluting something in a liquid, like you're diluted, like ink in a liquid. You feel like this ink drop in a liquid. You feel that you are, you know. And um, so the contagion effect is a major problem because it not only alters your behavior and your reactance, the way you react, but it alters your identity, who you are, or at the very least, your self-perception, or perception of your identity. It's it's disorienting and dislocating to the point of depersonalization, derealization, and dissociation. When we no longer know who we are and we, f are, we feel our identity is threatened, we do three things. We depersonalize. We suddenly feel that we, we are not we. We suddenly, it's like astral, astral uh, you know, we feel that we are disconnect from ourselves. We derealize. We feel that our reality is a kind of nightmare. It's not real. We feel like we are in some horror movie, you know, and that is that is where gaslighting comes into play because gaslighting is extremely effective 
precisely because the victim already has already has a feeling that reality is not real, that it's a horror movie. That's why gaslighting works, because the victim is already disoriented. Mm -hmm. And the third reaction, which is by far the most common, is dissociation, forgetting things, lapses, lapses in memory, deleting traumas, deleting scenes, suppressing, mm -hmm. and so on. So the contagion effect also has an effect on memory, continuity, identity, it's a major effect. It's not like, okay, if I live with a narcissist, I, I start to lie. Which is bad enough. That's not the issue. <laughs> it's a small issue. If I live with a narcissist, I start to not be. Well, that's much more serious problem.